Welcome to part three of the general chemistry review for organic chemistry. I'm Melissa Maribel, your personal tutor, and let's go over formal charges. Formal charges are the charges of each individual atom within the molecule. All the formal charges add up to the overall charge of the molecule. Formal charges are a great way to check if we drew the most stable Lewis structure. There are two different cases. Case one is a neutral molecule and case two is a charged molecule. Here's the neutral molecule of CO2. And here's the Lewis structure. Let's practice finding formal charges for each atom. Here's our formal charge formula. We'll apply this formula for the oxygen on the left. Start with the typical valence electrons for oxygen, which is six. Next are the bonding electrons. This means the electrons that are found in the bonds that are directly touching that oxygen, so we have one, two bonding electrons. Now count each individual lone pair, or really each electron on that oxygen. So we have one, two, three, four. Remember order of operations, or PEMDAS, we will start with parentheses first and then subtract. So our formal charge is zero. The oxygen on the right would have the same formal charge since it is exactly the same as the one on the left. Let's find carbon's formal charge. Carbon has four valence electrons. The electrons directly touching carbon are one, two, three, and four, and there are no individual lone pairs. So four minus four gives us zero. A neutral molecule prefers to have all formal charges be zero if it's possible for the structure. Case two, we have a charged molecule. Here are all the possible structures we have. Let's use formal charges to help us see which one is the most stable. We'll find the formal charges for each atom in the structure. Oxygen has six valence electrons. There are two bonding electrons and four individual lone pairs, so we will get zero for our formal charge. Carbon has four valence electrons. There are four bonding electrons and no individual lone pairs. Carbon's formal charge is also zero. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. There are two bonding electrons and four individual lone pairs. Nitrogen's formal charge is negative one. Note, the most electronegative atoms want to be negative. And looking back at our electronegativity trend, oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. So this structure is not the most stable since oxygen should be negative. Here are the formal charges for the next structure. Once again, oxygen prefers to be negative. And this one is out since the formal charge is a plus one. This last structure is the most stable due to the most electronegative atom of oxygen being negative. And you will also see that the central atom prefers to have a formal charge of zero. Next is resonance. When Lewis structures can be drawn multiple ways, this is known as resonance. Here's the first Lewis structure for a carbonate ion. To find the next structure, we can move the double bond to a different oxygen. What we are doing is moving the electrons to this oxygen and our double bond is breaking and reforming to a different oxygen. Resonance is represented by a double arrow. There's one more resonance structure. So we'll move the electrons to this other oxygen and break the double bond here and reform it on this oxygen. These are all of our resonance structures. This movement of electrons that we just saw is called delocalization. In organic chemistry, we're going to get a bit deeper into the concept of resonance. It is going to be described as a structure that has delocalized electrons, which is referring to the ability of moving electrons. If we were to combine all the resonance structures, it would give us a resonance hybrid. Think of it this way. Every person has different personality traits. Let's say in my case, I'm academic, dorky, and persistent. Combine all those traits together and you get me. Same goes for our carbonate ion. By combining all the resonance structures or personality traits, this gives you the complete Lewis structure, which is known as the resonance hybrid. The more resonance structures a molecule has, the more stable it typically is. Now for hybridization. Let's find the hybridization of each central atom for this structure. 
Looking at this first carbon, we will identify the electron geometry. To find the electron geometry, we must find the electron groups of this carbon. Electron groups are bonds plus lone pairs. We have one, two, three, four bonds and no lone pairs, so we have four electron groups. Using our table, this is tetrahedral, and tetrahedral has a hybridization of sp3. So each carbon has a hybridization of sp3. Let's find the hybridization of this structure. We'll find the electron groups and note, a double or triple bond only counts as one bond whenever we are finding the electron groups. So this carbon has one, two, three electron groups, making it trigonal planar for our electron geometry. And our hybridization for each carbon is then sp2. Let's find the hybridization for each carbon in this structure. We'll find the electron groups first, and the triple bond only counts as one bond. So we have one, two electron groups, making it linear. So our hybridization for each carbon is sp. If you missed part one or part two, you can find that right over here. And if you're ready for an introduction to organic chemistry, you could also find that right over here. And remember, stay determined, you can do this.